What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be having a deep look at the flinch, or some people call it aim punch mechanic, in Black Ops Cold War. And it's going to be a very interesting one, because this time around with this game, it behaves completely different than any previous Call of Duty game. So, hopping right into it, in the past with Call of Duty, whenever you got shot, or anytime you took damage, your point of aim would actually flinch upwards. And this would often mean if you were aiming at an enemy's head and they shot you, you would end up flinching above their head and then missing your target. And the amount that you flinched would depend on a wide variety of factors. In some older Call of Duty games, the main important factor was how much damage was being dealt to you at that given time. So if the enemy was using a higher damage weapon, you would end up flinching more than if they were using a low damage weapon. However, last year with Modern Warfare, they did change things up a little bit, and what really mattered was the gun that was in your hand, not the gun that was shooting you or not the amount of damage you were taking. So generally speaking, the smaller, lighter guns like SMGs would flinch more than the heavier guns like LMGs, which does technically make sense. In Black Ops Cold War though, it looks like they essentially started from scratch with their flinch mechanic, which is actually great in my opinion, and you'll see why as we go through this. But the first big thing they've done with flinch this time around is they've effectively eliminated actual flinch, like the flinch on your point of aim. It no longer really moves in Cold War, with a couple little exceptions that we'll show in this video. And what this means is you can now actually aim for the head in Call of Duty without having to worry about the enemy shooting you and your point of aim flinching up above the target and then you're just shooting the air above them. This is great because it eliminates a lot of the randomness in a gunfight and like I said you can actually aim for the head and be rewarded for that rather than being punished for aiming too high and then flinching up above your targets. Now having said this, even though your point of aim doesn't move, there is still flinch. It's just purely visual. So you'll see that your screen gets red, Sometimes your view will rotate very slightly, and then also your camera or your perspective will have a little bit of a shake to it. Your point of aim stays exactly the same, but it can be a bit visually disorienting. And as far as I can tell, it doesn't really seem to matter too much which gun is in your hand or which gun you're being shot by unless it's a sniper rifle, which we'll look at in just a little bit. There is some randomness built into the equation here, so even in the exact same situation where everything else is equal, sometimes you'll see a bit more visual flinch than other times. But for the most part, it is pretty consistent, and like I said, your point of aim remains the same. I should clarify here that I'm just talking about while aiming down sight. There is technically some actual flinch if you aren't aiming down sight, and you can see that right here. Your point of aim tends to bounce downward at first and then a little bit upward and it overcorrects a bit, so it just kind of bounces your aim slightly. But normally that's not really all that important if you're hip firing anyway, since there's already all that randomness with your hip fire. Additionally, something to know about the flinch in this game is your character model can be pushed by bullets. So even though your point of aim remains the same, you can see here, when I'm aiming at the same spot on the ground, as I'm being shot, my character model jumps back a little bit with each shot that's fired. And this is directly tied to the amount of damage that the enemy is dealing to you. So if the enemy shoots you with a sniper rifle, you can see just how big of a jump backward you get. Whereas if they're shooting you with a lower damage gun, like an FFAR for instance, then there's just little tiny movements backward as you get hit. Now what this means is sometimes this will actually be able to throw you off target, especially if you're not standing on flat ground. If you're standing on a bit of a ramp or maybe on a ledge or something, then yeah, being shot can knock you off target because it moves your feet. Now, moving on to the next important thing I wanted to cover when it comes to flinch, this is flinch with sniper rifles. If you're using a sniper rifle, it turns out there is actually a very, very small amount of flinch to your point of aim. Either that, or it might just be that with sniper rifles, your reticle is directly tied to your camera, unlike with the red dot sights, because it fills up your entire camera. In either case, your crosshairs do actually move when you're shot, but not by a large amount. It's not like previous Call of Duty games where you'll end up flinching way above the target. In most cases, this is going to have literally no impact on your ability to hit your target still. It's mainly just going to be those situations at really long ranges when all you can see is the head of your enemy, for instance. In those cases, it looks like you can be flinched slightly above target when using a sniper rifle. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that in my testing, there were some really rare instances where there was a slight movement to the point of aim with regular guns. And it's not something I could consistently replicate, but here's an example of a situation where there was a little bit of actual flinch to the point of aim. Again, not enough to really throw you off target or anything, but just to be as thorough as possible and let you guys know, 
sometimes there will be a situation where you get just a slight amount of movement to your aim. And finally, let's have a quick look at the attachments that reduce your flinch, or the ones that have flinch resistance. In this case here, I'm using the XM4, and on the left, I don't have any flinch resistant attachments at all. We just have the red dot sight on there. Whereas on the right, we have the field tape attachment, and this one provides a 90% boost to your flinch resistance. And I've had a lot of people wondering, what does this flinch resistance do if there is no actual flinch to your point of aim, and is it worth using? And as you can see here, at least in real time, there is almost no difference whatsoever. They appear to be basically exactly the same. However, if we slow things down, you start to see a very slight difference. The gun itself isn't moving around as much. And then if we zoom in and look at it really slow, yes, you can start to see a little bit. The camera doesn't rotate at all when you're using this flinch resistance attachment. But at the end of the day, I really don't feel like an attachment that helps with flinch is really necessary in this game. It doesn't seem to help enough to be worthwhile. Now, it's obviously not going to be hurting you at all to run it, and if you want to run it, fine, that's great. But just know, unlike previous Call of Duty games where flinch resistance would have been a huge help, it really doesn't do too much in Cold War. Also, I did want to take this testing one step further to see if these flinch resistance attachments will help with the fact that bullets will literally push you when you get hit. And it turns out it has no impact whatsoever here. You're still going to be pushed by the bullets just as much as if you weren't running this flinch resistance attachment. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for the breakdown and the analysis of this. Now I wanted to share my opinions on this. And I'm personally really happy with what they've done here when it comes to the flinch in Cold War. I think this has been a long time coming in Call of Duty. And I do feel this increases the skill gap, especially with the slower time to kill and the fact that headshot multipliers are pretty solid in this game and aiming for the head tends to help. I feel like this just rewards people that have good aim more than ever before in Call of Duty. And the reason for that is kind of like I said earlier, you can actually aim at the head in this game without the fear of being randomly punished when an enemy happens to land a shot on you. In previous Call of Duty games, if you were trying to get headshots, it was in your best interest to aim low, and in some CODs, you had to aim as low as like their belly button in order to try and hit a headshot as they were shooting you. And what that meant is oftentimes hitting those headshots was a really random occurrence. And it didn't incentivize people for trying to aim for that smaller target, which is the head, in order to gain that extra damage and therefore gain an advantage in the fight. Now you're actually rewarded for aiming directly at the head, and being shot isn't going to be punishing you. And this, in my opinion, is a great thing. I'm really, really happy that they've gone this direction in Cold War, and I hope future Call of Duties go in the same direction. Now, having said this, I do have a slightly different opinion when it comes to sniper rifles. When sniper rifles are powerful, especially when they're powerful at quickscoping, I do feel there should be some flinch when you're shot while holding a sniper rifle. And the reason for this is sniper rifles are a completely different style of gun, and basically if they hit their shot, then you're dead. And any shots that you put into them as they're lining up that shot mean literally nothing. And it's a completely different style of gunfight compared to like two assault rifles battling it out against each other. So in my opinion, when sniper rifles are balanced to the point where they're quite powerful at quickscoping, I do feel there should be some flinch, so that if I am playing to the strengths of my SMG or assault rifle for instance, and I'm challenging a sniper in close quarters, if I'm landing the first few shots before they can get aimed down sight on me, I do feel like my shots should count for something in that gunfight. I'm not saying they should be flinched way above my head, but I feel like they should count for something just to provide a bit more counterplay to the sniper rifle. Now having said all of this, they have nerfed the sniper rifles fairly noticeably from the beta. The aim down sight times are much slower. And based on my experience since launch so far with the current balancing, I'm actually totally fine with the flinch as it is right now with sniper rifles, and I don't think any more needs to be added. Now, if they decide to buff the sniper rifles and make them much more powerful at quickscoping again, then in that case, my opinion will likely change, and I would like to see a little bit of flinch added to them. But that is just my opinion, and this is where I want to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. First up, just in general, what do you guys think about the fact that flinch is now purely visual and doesn't really affect your point of aim? And then also, what's your opinion on the sniper rifle topic? Do you think sniper rifles should have flinch when they're shot, or do you think it should just be equal across the board and nobody gets any flinch at all? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.